Hi, today we're going to paint the drive through barn. This is kind of an unusual looking building, so I think it's kind of neat and I hope you enjoy painting it. Let's talk about your supplies that you're going to need for today. For the canvas, this is just a regular 16 by 20 canvas, but I put two coats of Americana Deco Art Silver Sage Green on it. Just gave a couple of coats. That way you get rid of the white canvas and you've got this nice soft green color to paint on. So that's what we'll do today. Of course I've got my line drawing on there already. And brush wise, let's go to kind of my basic brush set here. This is the background brush. It's a size 12 in a flat bristle. And then my small background brush is a size 6 in a flat bristle. And then also in a bristle brush you'll want a fan. This is my number 4 fan. And then you need some flat little sable brushes to work with. So this is my detail flat. It's a size 8. And you might also need a little smaller one. This is a size 4. It's my small detail. And then you'll need a liner. So if you have those brushes or something similar, you'll be fine. Also, you need a little bit of medium. I like to use Liquid Glaze. It's a Martin Weber product. I've just got a little bit in this cup. Uh, the container I use comes like this, but it also comes in smaller sizes. So, But it, a medium, what it does, you can stretch your paint out thinner with it, and it also speeds the drying time. So that's, that's real helpful. And uh, then let's run through our colors so you'll know what colors you need. And these are the Weber, Martin Weber Permalba oils. And that's the colors that I try to use most of all the time. Some of these are wanting to drip a little bit over here. Let's catch it before it runs down too far. But start over here with the white. And this is white. This one is cad yellow medium. This one's a, a cad orange. And here we've got Venetian Red, and Alizarin Crimson, and Burnt Sienna, Endothrone Blue, Permanent Green Light, Raw Umber, and Payne's Gray. So there's your colors. And I'll catch the drips before we get started here. <laughs> so okay, we're going to start with our sky. And I'm going to use my bigger brush. This is the background brush, and I'm going to be holding it more vertical like this. I like to work on the bottom corner of the brush and kind of push and give little scoots to the side. I'm going to brush mix my blue. I'm going to first pick up some white. Pick up a little bit, move it over here in the middle of your palette somewhere, and just with the corner of the brush, pick up a little bit of your endothrone blue. Just kind of swish it back and forth a little bit to mix it in with your white and I'll, I'll mix a little bit if I if I try it on my canvas and feel like it's too light then I'll just add more blue or if I feel like it's too dark I'll just add a little bit more white and adjust my colors that way and then we've got a lot of clouds in the middle of the sky here that I'm going to leave a lot of that area unpainted so we can come back and work our clouds in a little bit easier and they'll show up brighter against a a canvas that isn't already a lot of blue. Anyway, start out with your blue and I'm going to add just a little touch of medium as well. Thin the paint down just a little bit. And let's start on the bottom corner of your brush. I'm looking at my blue. I think it's pretty good. It, it's a little different when you're painting on a colored surface and you're brush mixing on a white because you'll, you'll find you think you've got the right color and it may be too light once you put it on the darker canvas. You may have to adjust it, but that's, that's fine. I adjust colors all the time on my, just working right on the canvas. And I'm coming down in this little crack of sky here that's between those trees. And as I brush mix my colors, I get some variation to the color and that's actually what I want to do because skies have a lot of variation to the color, so as I work, some of it may be a little lighter or a little darker, and that'll give it a little cloudy look, just, just fine. So I'm working in that blue over there, and then we'll come up around here and 
come on around that way. Okay, so as I come on over, I'm leaving some just general areas here that's unpainted. Kind of get some ups and downs and irregular areas that would suggest your clouds, and, and then we can put our clouds in there and kind of shape those. Everybody's sky will look different because we're putting the paint on a little different and moving the paint around a little differently, but that's part of the fun. We don't want everybody's to be a carbon copy anyway. Have your leeway to make it a little different. And uh, as you can see probably on the screen there, there's a little darker blue sometimes and sometimes a little lighter. And then as I come over this way, I'm going to introduce just a little bit of alizarin crimson to the blue and you'll get a lavender and, and some of that looks really pretty in the sky too a little bit of that in there. Lizard crimson is very, very strong, so just a small amount of it will go a long way, but it looks pretty to have just a little bit of that purple in there. And I'll come on over the rest of the way with some of that. And the tracing lines are there to give you a little guideline where things are going, but work right over the edges of your trees and so forth. Don't try to paint exactly around the little shapes that you've drawn in because they're just there kind of as a guide, but it doesn't mean you're going to stop exactly at those lines. I want to put just a little bit of blue over here above the barn, just a little bit or I've got just a little bit of the lavender in this brush load here, which is fine. But I still have some areas that's unpainted. Of course, this is the tree and there's trees, and, but this in here is going to be sky, so we'll stop right there with our sky. Okay, after I step back and look at mine, I decided I need a little more blue up here just for contrast when we put our clouds in. So I'm going to reload my brush with a little bit more of the blue and white and work some of that in so we'll have a better cloud uh, contrasting color there. Just a little bit more blue will help. That should be enough now that the clouds will show up a little bit brighter. When I think my sky is finished, I'm going to clean my brush. And that means tarp it out and dry it out. So I clean it and take a paper towel and squeeze the bristles like this. Don't take your brush and just be real rough with it because you break the bristles all apart and, and your brush won't last very long. But if you press and squeeze and maybe just kind of pull gently like here, to get that turp out of there, then you dry your bristles and it doesn't damage your brush. And we'll be ready for our clouds. Okay, I'm going to pick up the paint for my clouds. I've, I've cleaned the brush. So coming back up to the paint, pick up, kind of going one way with the paint, I'm picking up a little white. And then I'm going to add just a little tiny bit of cad red, um, a lizard crimson, not cad red light, it's a lizard crimson and a speck of orange, and I mean just a speck. I'm just barely touching those colors. And then you get a color that's still way too bright, so I gotta pick up just a little more white. I want just a soft, kind of a peachy color. Real soft, so quite a bit, quite a lot of white. And then that should work. And then coming in with the paint on the corner of the brush, I'm, I'm just gonna lay it in and then work around so you're getting kind of an uneven edge. It's just little uneven edges. You'll, you'll overlap the blue a bit. You want to pick up actually a little bit of the blue. You're coming in there and coming over maybe this way so that your clouds are not all little ball shapes. We want to pull it out at the bottom and let it blend into your blue sky. I could actually have a little bit more pink in mine, I think. So I'll adjust it and make this one a little bit peachier. 
little padding strokes on the bottom corner of the brush and then kind of scooting underneath your cloud to flatten it out. So you're coming in and flattening it out. Don't want to lose my little cupolo up there. Some of the green sky can actually show through the clouds a little bit too. Just kind of pull it out and let some of that green show through and work for you. So you get some wind blowing looking clouds, get a little pulling off to the side there. And try not to get all your clouds in a row. Like maybe I'm making this one up here a little taller. It can actually run out of the picture. And again, I'm going to pick up just a little touch more alizarin crimson. I like to see a more color in there. I had it just a little bit too soft. And then over here to this side, I'm just kind of pulling some of that color back into the greens and the blues. And I'm going to add just a little bit more white on the edge of this cloud, just with a corner of the brush, just to get a little fluffier look there. Since that one's kind of white, I need some more on some, some of the other clouds. But when I load the brush, I'm loading one side. I'm just loading like this, and then the paint's on this one side. So when I come in to make a little edge to the cloud, there is my paint on that one side where I get the paint, the lightest, coming, looking more to the right. And you can just work in some extra clouds wherever you want them to be. Clouds are pretty, just soft and billowy looking. And that's that extra paint that's on the top of the brush. Stop right there and look at them and see what we, anything we want to change on them. It's a good idea to get back from your painting once in a while and you can see what you're doing a little better. Sitting too close to it so much at a time. Your clouds have a little wind blown look at the bottom. Big flat, big fat clouds I should say instead of flat. Big fat clouds have a flatter bottom to them where the wind kind of sweeps them along and so if you give it that little stroke going across that flattens them out a bit so I think these clouds are going to be fine for us for today maybe just a little bit of an edge more up here some at some point you always have to stop on your clouds or if you just keep working them they just keep getting to the point they get over blended so as long as you see some little edges and some pretty colors they'll be they'll be fine so We'll stop with them when they look something sort of like that. Okay, we're going to work now with for our small background trees. We're going to come in with all these trees that are kind of back in the distance. And now that's not including the big dark pine tree shapes that's going to be here on the side. We'll do those separately. So I'm, right now I'm going to do these trees here and then we'll come over and do uh, this taller tree up here, the big tree, and the, some little trees down here. Uh, let's start in this area here, and I'm using the small background brush. And I'm going to pick up Payne's Gray with just a little bit of the, the uh, green, the bright green there. Payne's Gray and a little bit of the green, but it's going to look really dark. This color is going to look dark. And we're going to come right down, right against the roof edge. You want to come right against that roof edge, right there. So we'll kind of draw that in so you're not going to paint past that line. And then there's this little edge right here where your trees are hitting the building, or well, they're behind the building, but pattern lines touch there. And then I'm just kind of bouncing this in, kind of getting a dark base coat. When you paint foliage with a with oil paints, you you tend to go dark values first, and then mid tones, and then highlights. So you get a little variation of your color. You get some dark, medium, and light. And so we're starting with the darker value, but we'll lose part of it, but some of it will still show. You get just a little bit more of that uh, green in there that can lighten up the dark a little bit, but we really don't want it too light. We want it to stay a dark value. Uh, and when I get to the top, I'm, I'm maybe not using quite so much paint. Just let there be less paint on the brush and you're coming up and kind of 
making the top edges of these trees look ir irregular. There's a little bit peeking up over the top of the building right there. Maybe it won't be quite so dark. And then I've got to work this on over toward the big pine tree. And again, uh, the, the brush is kind of held more vertical than anything. And then, of course, I can turn it this way and that. But the idea is not to get just tons of paint on here. You can use a little medium, take that a little touch. You get a dark look, but it's, it's not just a lot of paint. So it'll be easier to put some light colors on top of it. I think I've about got enough. It doesn't have to be even in solid. We've got some light green behind it. and I think we'll just maybe do this little bit at a time. Well, no, let's go ahead. While this dark's in the brush, I'm changing my mind. So we'll move on over to the other side of the canvas. And I'll start down here toward the bottom. And I'll, again, I'll get right up against the building. And you'll come down to the ground line. Sometimes you, if you pick up a little bit uh, more of your paint's gray again, so you get a little bit lighter value, and that's fine. Time we get some highlights on some of this, then of course it's going to look lighter. I've got a little bit more green worked into that one, I think, and it looks good. It's all right. And then we're coming up here against the side of the building. And edge of the road. Since this is foliage, when you come out into the sky, make it look soft and uneven. Kind of lift up on the pressure so you're not pushing so hard rubbing so hard or anything. So you get a soft look to the edges of your trees. And we'll keep this same color going on on up here into this big tall tree. And get a nice dark base coat. So we're, we're continuing on. When I get to this bigger tree, I usually start kind of in the middle of the tree, and then you can work out how big you want the tree to be against the sky. And I find if I point the brush in the direction of the edge I, and tap, I get a nice looser look. See, I'm tapping with the brush on the edge especially. And I, I'll turn the brush and point it to the edge and then work on out into the sky and you get that nice soft look. If you keep the brush one angle all the time, you don't get that nice irregular pattern out there. And, and my, my colors are varying. I mean, I've got a lot of paints gray in it sometimes and other times I've got a little bit more of the permanent green light. So colors will have some variation but still be on the dark side. This is this is the darker value we're putting in right now. So if you don't have enough dark back in your foliage, your foliage will wind up looking flat. <clears throat> People have a tendency to over highlight and they lose their dark values and then their tree has a very flat look and they don't know why. And I say, well, it's because you left, lost your dark, put some dark back in it. This tree doesn't quite go out of the picture, but it gets up there about that tall, probably. And try to make it nice and uneven on the edges. That makes your tree so much more interesting. We don't want it too, too even up there. Looks like somebody trimmed it. So some branches need to come out further than others. That's the idea. 
that's probably pretty much as tall as that tree needs to be. So I think when you get it to this point right here, and I'm back over here on the other side with a few little strokes that I see I needed to put in, uh, that's going to be enough of the dark value and then we'll build some light up on it. Okay, inside this opening in the barn right through here, the drive through part, whatever color you've got out here in your trees, you're going to see in here. Uh, it might be a good idea before we get in there with too big a brush to take one of your smaller brushes, a little flat, and go around the opening so that you're not going to lose your lines. So I'm just going to take a little bit of the paints gray and the green and just come right up against those lines so I will retain our barn pattern not lose it. Big brushes you can make a little stroke too many and you've lost the pattern line. And it will go, actually you can go all the way down here. There's a little line across the bottom there. That's just where it's going to stay a little bit darker but for right now you can just ignore that line and paint down to the bottom of the building right there, that second line. seems a little bit dry. Mine seems just a little bit dry so I'm going to pick up just a little touch of the medium so your paint will move along a little easier. But once you get most of that in around the edges if you want to continue filling it in and using the bottom corner of your bigger brush it'll just go faster. just a little bit of light right there in the center but I'm going to leave it. I just kind of got some on the brush and we're going to be putting more of that in anyway so I'll just leave that little lighter spot there. Okay, we're going to start some of our highlights on the trees and, and again you don't want to lose all this dark but our light is, is coming a little bit more from the right side. The, you can see this right side of the barn is very light compared to the other side so that's your direction of light. And for the highlights on the tree, I'm picking up some of the permanent green light with a little bit of yellow medium. And sometimes I even add just a little touch of white in it. But I'm tapping. I'm just going to tap on the outside edge, starting with the outside edges, and get a few little light leaves out there. They're coming out against the sky. And once you start losing your paint, pick up a little more because you don't want to pound this in. Use a light, light touch. And if you see that you're losing too much of the dark as you work back in there, you can pick up a little bit more paints gray and tap some dark back in. We're just, we're thinking of groups of foliage. When you see a big tree that's off in the distance, you're not necessarily going to see individual leaves, but you see groupings of lights and darks. So, if you make a little nice group here of your light out there where the edges of the leaves would hit, the light would hit them, that's going to give you some shape for your little groups. So it's light and then kind of fading down into the darker values. Just kind of keep tapping with the corner of the brush and reload the brush as needed. So I've got just a little very light green. Again, that's paints or not paints gray, it's your uh, permanent green light, a little bit of yellow medium, and sometimes a little touch of white, but not necessarily every time. See, I'm just tapping in those little edges and then letting it fade back into the dark. Don't stop it just abruptly, let it fade back. So you get a little heavier paint on the outside and then lift up on that pressure as you come back over the some of the dark and then you get a little bit of light, but it's not so much. 
but I can also, like in the middle of the tree right here, I can have a lighter grouping. So there's another light edge kind of looking out toward the edge of the canvas there and then again fading that back in. So it makes another little group there that builds your shapes of your trees. Nice yellow green. That makes a sunny, light, bright look. Maybe a little bit up in here somewhere. Another little light group. And then a, it's underneath the light group is where you want to shade it back into the tree. And again, get out of it before you overkill and lose your dark. Real easy to do, too. You're just working along, next thing you know, you, all your dark's gone. Then you have to put it back in. And whatever you put inside this little opening should be something similar over on the other side, just so it looks like it's a continuation of the same trees. That's probably enough light on that tree. Okay, once you've got this side done, we're moving on over here to get our highlights on this side as well, and it's the same colors. Lots of, uh, lots of yellow and white, mm -hmm. even white in with your touch of green, so it gets pretty, pretty light back here. This is a nice light area, but still you want to see some of the dark for, for depth in your trees, but work some more just loose groupings over here. You get a lot of sunshine on these trees. People usually don't have any trouble getting the little dots of light on here, groups of light on here, but it's that fading down into the shadows that seems to give people problems. So. It's just kind of letting your color blur down into the dark so it looks like the light hits the tree on the edges and then it just fades back into the shadows of the tree. That's what we're looking for. And all of this is just little bits of light and dark. It doesn't have to be strong groups, strong edges on anything. Just get some light and dark in there. Okay, that's probably going to be about enough of that. Maybe we'll have, well, let's, let's come on up here. I'm just now realizing that there's some light greens on up here next to this big pine tree where it's going to come out there. I'm going to put just a little bit of darker value in here, back side of it too. But there is some light kind of climbing up next to that tree. Just a little area for it there. Okay, that's good. Now we've got not nice lights and nice darks in there. Okay, we're going to paint our big pine trees and, you know, I've got my fan brush in my, my uh, hand here and I'm just making sure I've got enough yellow greens around those trees because the trees are going to be very, very dark, so you want some light values right up against them on those trees. So, if you don't feel like you've got enough, you can take, well, this one's over against the sky, so it's okay, but you can just take a little of your yellow white on the fan and just tap it on in against that tree and then you'll be fine and then we're going to paint the tree and we're going to use the fan brush these little leaves kind of tend to go up so I'm going to hold the brush so I'm coming in kind of on the side of the brush make, making kind of a wedge out of the brush let me get some dark in it first this is mostly Payne's gray you can have just a little touch of the green in there and maybe a touch, just a little touch of a lizard crimson. 
When you want to make a green very, very dark, you can put a touch of red in it because that's the complement of green on your color wheel, and it will darken the value. I'm also going to pick up just a little medium, so I've got a very, very dark value here with Payne's Gray, a little bit of the permanent green light, and a touch, just a touch of alizarin crimson, so I've got a, almost a black looking color. Now, watch my brush up here to the top. I'm coming in on the side of the brush. It, the brush is working, I'm working underneath the brush. Don't, don't work right on the end of the bristles. It just makes it too fuzzy. So I'm, I'm working on the side of the brush. And then as I come out into the sky, the little branches look like they're tipped up just a bit, reaching for the sun. You got to keep lots of paint on your brush. Don't be stingy with your paint. Lots of paint and uh, a little little bit of medium, so it's slightly damp. And then I'm just coming right down the side of the canvas and then coming over into the canvas a little bit with your branches. You can do it. You can do it this other way too. Let me show you a different angle you can use and have the same results. My handle can go up in the air like this. See where I'm working on the bottom corner of the brush. And then as I tap, I kind of come out on the bottom corner of the brush and that gives you a little upward stroke too. So whichever way feels more comfortable for you. But you want those little branches kind of reaching out there so they look a little bit irregular and uneven. This should go pretty quickly, folks. Don't labor over this. It just work. You're just filling it in and then giving it a little bit of a branch effect out there on the edges. And then when we get way down in here, I'm just simply filling in dark all the way down to this line right there. Ames grains. Permanent green light, maybe just a touch of a lizard, or you can leave the lizard off once you get down here. All the lizard does is just make it look a little bit of a darker value. But I'm just going to fill this in. You could you could switch to a to the small background brush if you prefer down here, because this is not particularly part of the tree. It's just dark shrubbery. down here at the bottom. Okay, coming over to the other side, I'm going to do the same thing over here. Coming in with the fan brush and let those little points kind of flip up just a little bit. Most pine trees on most pine trees, toward, at least toward the top of the tree, your little branches tend to reach up instead of down. There are varieties of pine trees or fir trees that the branches go down, but I like the ones that go up easy, better because they look a little more cheerful than something that looks kind of hanging down. Now this tree will still retain some of your blue sky through there. Keep your dark values going on and just fill it in. When it gets down here to the bottom, it's going to be in front of this foliage that we just did back there in the distance. So you'll overlap it. Okay, there's our tall trees on each side. Okay, 
in this little really dark area down at the bottom while you've got your fan brush going pick up just a little bit of some of your lighter greens and just take the corner of the brush and just tap in a little bit of green down here you just do it with the corner of your fan brush doesn't have to look like any particular shape but that'll just put a little bit of light down toward the bottom right right in this one area right through there and then we'll be ready to paint the building and because my tree is kind of even down through here I'm, I'm pulling out just a little bit longer branch I still don't want to lose all of the sun or the sky back there though so I'll retain a little bit of that but otherwise I think this background is all as finished as we need to have it for right now. Okay, use a small brush and we're going to paint this little cupola up here on the top. Uh, I've got my number four flat. If you've got, even got a little round brush that's like a sharp tip on the edge that would work. But I'm going to do this shadow. This is the shadowed side first and this is a white with just a little touch of the blue in it. It's a little bit of blue white, but it's got to be a lighter value than your sky behind it. So you'll have to watch out. Make sure you've got darker sky behind so it'll show up. Sometimes you have to go back and adjust the background color. There's lots of times I'll go back and paint the background color a little bit bluer just so what I'm doing up here will show up and you can do that too if you needed to. But anyway, this is kind of the blue, bluish white on this side and the little vent area, the little window of the vents in there is going to be dark so I'm just painting around that with the blue white and then this little area on the other side is a whiter white and so I'm going to clean the brush and dry it out and just pick up white and then we're going to paint this side white. It's got a little pointy top up there. And again, you've got the little vent thing going on. So I'll leave that open and unpainted. Try to get your sides straight. And if you need to, you can actually use your liner up here in the top to make that little peak. If you're having a problem with a flat brush, get, get your liner and you can be more detailed. Now this side is shorter because it hits the roof and this side's a little longer because you're seeing as it comes down, you know, into the roof. It straddles the roof, in other words, your whole thing does. So once you've got your blue white and your white white in there, then you can pick up a little bit of raw umber. I'm just maybe going to use my liner here with a little touch of medium so it's thin enough I can mark it off. But it's so small that you don't want a great big brush in here because you'll paint more than you intend to. I'm making this a whole little vent area dark. At least use your liner to get around the edges and then if you wanted to fill it in in the middle with a flat brush you can. That would go a little faster. Be a little easier. And then the little opening over here on this side is very small because you're looking sideways at it. It's the same dark. I'm cleaning the edges up just a little bit on the dark side here around the opening. And then you've got the little vent lines up there. Once you get your sides in in the dark, I put one line, one kind of little blue-white line down through the middle and then however many you can get in here, maybe about three little across lines. 
And they don't have to be perfect, just so you get the idea of there being uh, little louvers in there, something for your vents on the building. And just, just a little bit of a smudge over there in that light one should do it. top of the roof is going to be mostly Venetian red with maybe just a little bit of raw umber. And I'll put that in with my flat brush. I think I can use that fine for that. Venetian red and, and maybe after I get the red in I want to pick up just a little bit of raw umber and just kind of draw a line under the roof edge and you can throw a little stroke or two of, of your raw umber in the red and then I'm going to just a tiny little line down the other side. And that finishes it off. Okay. Let's move down to the inside of the barn and all of this portion of the building that you're seeing inside, it, you see those walls and everything that's inside, it's going to be very, very dark. So again, I'm taking my little chisel edge brush and working around the opening. And this is Payne's Gray with a little bit of raw umber added, so it has a black look. <coughs> This would be the inside line. Usually when I want a very dark mix, I'll just pick up several of the dark colors that's on my palette. You can add blue to it. You can even put a touch of a lizard with it. It's just mixing up some dark values. And we'll paint all of this little section in here that's back in the shadows, deep dark shadows. What were the colors again? Uh, paint's gray and raw umber. And that's your main color. You could add touches of the dark blue, a little touch of alizarin could go in it. Just anything that's dark so it has a black look when you paint with it. And I like to add just a tiny little bit of medium, just enough to thin the paint down just a little bit so it goes on easier, covers the texture of the canvas easier. Across the floor, what would be the floor of the building here, is also quite dark. You could cut right across even into the light green right there and just pull a shadow across the floor. Kind of keep that going straight and that way it makes it look more like, you know, you've got, you've got some floor there, but you can see it now. Square it up if you need to, to, to keep it from getting too crookedy. And 
If you if you should happen to get too much dark on the inside, or you you know kind of brush slipped or something, you got it over in here. Just clean it up by taking some of your yellow white and just go back over it and just blend it in and it'll be fine. We're, we're not always perfect the first time. Although we want to be. The top of this is kind of a flat line back there. It's the same opening, you know, you'd have up here, but it's just back on the other side of the building so it looks smaller. It's a little distance away. So there's the inside opening, and then the next thing we're going to do is start with our walls. Okay, let's move over now to the very left end of the building. We've got this little portion of the building that's sticking out right there, and we're going to start with that. Uh, pick up a little bit of your raw umber Payne's gray mixture with your detail flat, and we're going to go right underneath that little line that's the... Uh, roof edge. Well, we won't paint the roof edge. We'll leave that for later. But this is a dark value that's right directly under it. More, more Payne's gray probably than raw umber actually. This is quite dark. And then we're coming over here right against the building wall where the little corner board thing is going to be. Make that pretty dark right in there. And that's the only area that it's going to be really dark for right now. So I'm going to uh, clean the brush when I get that dark in there. So dip it and turp and clean it. And then we'll start in with our board direction lines. And they're going to go across, as you can tell. But we've got to have a base coat on here first. And your base coat's going to be a mixture of burnt sienna with a little Venetian red in it. So you're going to have a rusty red color and I'm just working back and forth, kind of working with the underneath side of the uh, chisel edge of the brush. Burnt sienna and Venetian red. If you want it just a little less bright red, get a little more um, of the burnt sienna in there. want a little redder you can go with a little bit more of the Venetian red but I usually just kind of mix them about a half and half around the roof edge but I'm just going back and forth across and even though I'm going back and forth across with the direction of the board lines you'll have to still yet put more board lines in this is again just a base coat there's going to be a little corner board on this down, downward edge here, and I'm going to leave a little unpainted for the corner board. So I'm going to paint next to it. And again, a little bit of medium is very, very helpful when you're trying to cover things in here. If you catch some of that dark, you lay it in at the sides and pull it out into the wall so much the better. You'll get a little bit of a streaky look as we come in across, even with the base coat. You can see a little bit of a streaky barn board kind of look. There's going to be some really dark values under that porch right there, so I'm not going there quite yet. I'm just kind of staying out here in this lighter area. I'm working with actually more burnt sienna than the red. It's still pretty red, but we got some shadows to work into it also. I'll go around my little window.
Once I get the red in there, I may pick up just, just a little bit of raw umber and streak in just for a little variation of color and to get something a little bit darker in there. Very little bit, though. I like the red look of the building, so it's an old barn red color. A little dark can be darker with the raw amber can be worked in too because there's going to be some lighter board lines coming in on top of this just to create your light. All underneath this roof edge is going to be very dark again. Uh, we've got deep shadows. This is a big overhanging roof. So back in under the shadows back in there is going to be dark. Raw umber. My dark values in here all along this under underneath the roof edge. I'm kind of skipping over the windows for now and the door. There's a door back there. This whole long side is actually the darker side of the building. The only part of the building that's really lit is this little narrow edge that's going to be on the other side of this wall right, right over here. That's the light side of the building. The rest of this is all dark on the shadowed side at least, so it's going to be somewhat darker. So there's your dark shadows pulled down all the way under that roof edge. That's raw umber again coming down a little further and then I'll start picking up my rusty reds again with the burnt sienna and Venetian red. But all of this little section back in under here is just a little bit darker. It's going to be a little bush there. We can kind of go around that bush when you get there. Or if you paint it out it's no big deal. We'll find it again. just continuing to fill in all of this siding so again it's mostly burnt sienna a little bit of Venetian red can be added and then when you come up to the dark at the top just blend it together so that it looks like it just sets together fine but you want this pretty dark under all this roof overhang and everything so you may I'm going to pick up just a little bit more raw umber and tone it down just a little bit more so it keeps enough shadow there that looks like it's back in the deep shadows so that wall is pretty much finished I think for right now unless we decide to 
deep in the shadows a little more, but there will be some highlight, just a very small amount of highlight on this portion here, but we'll have a little bit more over there on to the left, but we'll come back to that. Okay, after you get the bottom portion done, let's just move on up here and we're going to go in under the roof edge again with your Payne's Gray and Raw Umber mixture so it looks real dark and shaded up there. Putting dark right under the roof edge and then the edge of the roof will be lighter and that makes it look like it sticks out past the wall, which it should. So we want to keep that nice and shady and dark up there. And the rest of the wall is going to be your rusty reds again, so I'll clean the brush and pick up the Venetian red and a little burnt sienna, or more burnt sienna and less Venetian red, just kind of however it comes out. And we'll go ahead and base this in. And again, you've got a little corner board there that I'm going to go around. That on each end. work around the windows. Doesn't, again, this doesn't have to look real smooth. You can have the streaks in it because that just adds to the character of the boards. You can get a few little streaks in there, that's even better. Farm siding has, can have a lot of different values in it, lights and darks. And, have the rusty red in here and then like as I said once this is all based in with the dark then we'll, we'll have a few little lighter boards across the base of this. far over here to the other side. Again, you've got a corner board, so I'll come right down to the edge of it. And then you've got all these little light edges that's going to be around the opening. It's also going to be like little uh, board lines there, little trim boards. So we'll paint around those and then just do a fill in. This is based in like this. We'll let that set up for just a little while and then we'll come back and we'll add some more detail to it. So after the walls are all done, we're coming in here with a little bit of white or orange. I've got just a little touch of orange in the white 
and you're going to go across working on the side of the chisel edge and this little scooting back and forth strokes just suggest the highlights on some of these boards so it looks like you've got the little board lines in there and I'm not going to go up too close to the top there you want it to still stay real shaded up there to the top so we'll leave that dark up there and just maybe a little bit of light cutting across a few little a few little lines down here where they'll show I guess right in through there but not, not too much just a small amount of paint in the brush and as you kind of work back and forth you'll pick up some of the dark value and that's actually what you want to do because that keeps it from being real bright and white and there's hardly anything under the porch you might just have a little suggestion of something down low toward the bottom where some of the light might fall come in but up in the top portion it's too dark to see any board lines at all so we don't need to mess with that just maybe just a few little suggestions over here but just keep it just very subtle and we'll have the same thing on this little portion over here Just want enough in there to see it, but not so much. It looks too prominent. Little orange and white. One good thing about painting more of the flat surface of the building where you're not seeing a whole lot of side walls and go away from you and stuff you don't have all those perspective lines to worry about what little highlights we'll have over on our other side is going to be very minimal i mean detail is very minimal over there and while you're using this highlight too We'll, we'll do our little corner boards with this same color. Little orangey white. ready for a corner board just take your little orangey white and just take the chisel edge of the brush and come right down the corner line pays to have a pretty good brush that has a little sharp edge to it it makes it easier the brush is real flared out and kind of Puppy, it's a little harder to get a good line with it. And I'll come I'll come around this door over here also with the same thing. On the door though, I'm going to just kind of work a little bit of dark right around the little facing. Just a little bit more dark maybe just to pull it out. And when you come in with your light color it kind of pops it out a little bit better if there's a dark line behind it we'll have to paint our end wall in a few minutes because it's not done yet that's probably it on these lines for, for right now we'll add this little roof here well we could go ahead and put that in if you want to it's it's a little bit of white maybe a touch of blue with your white 
that's just a little bit of the roof edge edging that you see there, just the side of the roof. Kind of a blue-white or blue-gray color. Okay, let's move over to this little end wall over here. It's really in the sunlight. Uh, up toward the very top, though, it's going to be just a little bit darker. That roof overhang is going to throw a shadow on this top part of the wall. So that could be a little darker right now. That's just burnt sienna. But I'm going to add, wipe the brush and pick up just a little bit of raw umber and kind of tone it down even a little bit more with some raw umber. But when you get down here a little further where you're more in the sunlight, I'll go ahead and pick up just a little bit of the rust color. I'm just kind of working this in with downward strokes because I'm not worried about the little board lines going back. It's They're not going to show much on this side. And then I'm going to pick up orange, a little bit of orange and white and fill it in with this orangey white. You want it to look like the sun's really, really hitting it. And when the sun hits something real strong, it, you know, it almost blocks out all the detail. I'll come back with a little bit of shading on it, but right now it's gonna look pretty light. wipe the brush and I'll pick up just a little bit of Venetian red and we'll put just a few little pulls across of Venetian red just just a little bit it's gonna kind of fan out down here to the bottom because of the angle of perspective but again we're not going to make it so that there's much detail on it just just a suggestion of boards and down here they kind of go across and then up here they straighten out a little bit and then up here they kind of angle down and it, it, like I said it's nothing more than a suggestion of them and then we want that to come the light to come right on over see we've got that little corner board line again so we'll come right over into that corner board or we'll create the corner board with our light value, your white and orange color, like we did on the other places. You could put just a little touch of raw umber to the inside of that corner board. That'll pop it out. And the other side, I'm not gonna worry about at all. It's too far away it's in the sunlight. there and then the overhang of the roof up toward the top right there in the gable is going to be dark. Raw umber paints gray. Anything that looks really really dark. roof will end. It's almost even with the other roof corner there. So 
little bit of background trees there that needs to be filled in with a touch of green on mine. You may not have that on yours. That little roof overhang is very, very dark. If it's not dark enough, add some more paints gray to it. That will darken it right up. And after that, we'll be ready to paint our windows. Okay, after your walls are done, let's paint our windows. And the, the glass part of the window is just going to look dark. So I'm just using your mix of paints gray and a little raw umber. And leave the little frame lines unpainted. Sometimes instead of leaving them just dark, you can you can come into a little bit of white or blue white and and put just just a tiny little stroke of light in there so it looks like there's a little reflection on glass. You don't want to do so much that you you know lose too much of all of the white. I mean all of the dark, but with your white, but just a little quick stroke in there gives them a little bit of reflection glass always reflecting things. Throw in that just tiny little bit of highlight in each window pane with just a quick stroke, about one quick stroke, two at the most, is all you need for the highlights. Working on the window frames, I'm going to start with these lower ones up here because they're darker, quite a bit darker, back under the porch overhang. There's very little light comes in back here, so I've got just a little bit of a blue-gray, but it barely shows up the edges. Like I said, if you get these window frames too bright back in under the wall, they won't stay on the wall. They'll jump forward. We don't want them jumping forward. We want them to lay back there on the wall. So we'll keep them a dark, kind of a gray color. If anything would be slightly lighter, they, they could be just a tiny bit lighter toward the bottom where the light would tend to come in and filter in a little bit more. But at the top you just want to barely see them. You can use some your blue or a little bit of touch of raw umber with the white just so you get that really grayed down. A lot of times I like to do a little dark line just to the outside edge of the frames too. Or the, that kind of tidies it up a bit, plus it makes it uh, pull away from the wall nicely to just have that little bit of dark. Just 
a little touch of it, especially up here where these are going to be lighter, it'll show up more. A little shadow around the edge of the frame. And if you get your frames down here too light, you'll notice it right away because, they, like I said, they'll look like they jumped forward. If your brush does not have a good chisel edge, you may need to go to a, a, a little round brush or a, even a liner. It's better than nothing. The liner's a little too thin, actually, but your brush needs to have enough of an edge that it'll work for you. Sometimes the best idea is just to buy a new brush. When you use brushes a lot, they get worn out pretty fast. using my little number four. That's my little small detail flat. And it's a good one to use. I've got a little filbert brush that's a number four filbert that's real sharp on the edges and it's really good for this kind of detail too. one that I'm working on right now is actually a door. So you've got your frames on each side and it's dark in the center. And then to make it look more like a door I'm going to put a little line through the middle and just suggest some little trim on the door. Your trim could look different from mine but I just kind of did that it look like it's got some molding on it or something that would make it look more like a door. And I think I will go to my liner for some of these little cross boards on the for your window panes. One little line through the center, just where you can see it, kind of divides it up into two window panes. You can tidy things up a bit with a liner if you need to. also with your liner. That's a good brush to use if you're going to put some little dark lines down the outside of your window frame. Liner works good for that. Just have a little bit of Payne's gray or raw umber something dark on your brush and cleans up the edges around your frames. It pops it away from the wall a little bit. This, this real long uh, one right here, that's also a door. So again, I'm going to put the same, maybe the same kind of uh, screen on there. Maybe it's, you could do it a little different if you wanted. It wouldn't have to match. That makes that one look a little more like a door.
top windows are going to be a little bit whiter on the frames. They don't have to be real, real white. You can still have just a little touch of orange in them or something that would warm them up just a bit. too bright. I think instead of the blue, let's, or the orange, let's go to a blue because these are in the shadows after all. Not as deep as shadows as you've got down below, but they're still on the shadowed side of the building. Tedious. really really almost just use that green for these window frames that's up here on the top and just let let that green show and kind of shade around it that would have been a pretty good do for the windows and a lot less trouble just have to tidy up around it a bit and you've got it done Okay, let's start with the upper roof and get our roof on here. The upper roof is lighter. It's got more light spots in it than the darker one, which is a little grayer. But um, roof colors are optional. You can make them different colors. Uh, this one was just the real rusty looking tin. But if you wanted to put a little more blue gray in it, you could or, or less. You know, it's, it's optional. Look good either way. But I'm going to come across the top with a little bit of my burnt sienna. So we'll just take, I'm using my detail flat brush on this. And if it's a little wiggly woggly, that just makes it look older. But be sure your roof comes in to that little gable or that little end right there so that it looks like the, that it's straddling that little building up there is straddling the roof, little cupola. But the roof will be dark against the sky since the sky is light. So we'll pull this down. And then when you when you do your downward strokes, go with the slope of the roof. So you're you're working with this slant right here. As you go across, you can come in and just kind of give you a little sketch so you know which way you're going. See that it winds up going parallel to the other side of the roof. And the, the slopes are similar, but they vary just, just slightly. So our roof colors are going to be the burnt sienna. You're going to have some uh, Venetian red in there. You're going to have some gray blue. So, anyway, I'll start with the red and kind of work that in a little bit more so, but I'm leaving some of this bottom area unpainted. 
because I, I'd like I would like to run a little lighter value and maybe some more blue grays or something down here toward the bottom so it's going to pull it away from the wall we want a barrier color enough for contrast And I'll, I'll just reach down and kind of wipe the brush and pick up. I'm going to go with a little Payne's gray and white. That will give you a blue gray. Payne's gray and white. And then I'll, let's see, that's not quite dark enough. But it looks real white, like that looks. You've got to have more Payne's gray. Or you could add just a little touch of the Indithrone blue in it also. But you're just looking for a blue gray that'll look blue and not white. And I never know until I touch a little bit of the color up there if it's the right value or not. That's going to look a little bit better, but some of that still needs to be a little darker, I think. There we go. There's some more blue that's actually blue. down to the bottom of the roof. Gotta go across there just to clean up my edges. I'm putting this in, I'm pulling some of that rust color down over the blue, just even as I put the blue in, I'm kind of catching up into the rust. You can also pick up more rust color and pull it in too over the blue. It just kind of working back and forth between the rust colors and the blues. Get your shingles, not really shingles, it's sheets of tin. And cut it in. old barn roofs can have a kind of a swaggy look to the top that makes it look like it's been around for a long time or you can keep them nice and straight if you don't like swags in your roof our roof could be finished at that point or you could pick up just just a little bit of orangey white and do a few little strokes that's somewhat lighter if you want to just add a little bit more orange in there just for some touches of light maybe on the roof someplace but I'm going to leave it just about at this point darker at the top a little lighter toward the bottom and that that helps you to bring that roof out and this dark line under the roof helps to push the wall back so you want to make sure that your dark line is still there sometimes they get lost in the painting and have to come back and kind of reestablish some of that dark and also, just for uh, an older look, if you want to pull some little cracks up into the roof, I like to see those little cracks in the roof and maybe a little irregular pattern once in a while where the tins kind of folded up or something there. All of that adds to the old look and gives it more character. We don't want it to look like it was new and how much damage you do to your roof's up to you. You can put a lot of little cracks in it or not so many. I'll just do a little bit. Don't want it to look like it's really falling down. And then we'll move down to the bottom roof and treat it in the very same way. We'll have it a little darker back here toward the building. That would be more in shadow. I'm gonna put 
And instead of burnt sienna, though, I'm going to go to uh, a little Payne's Gray and Raw Umber for contrast sake. So since the, the wall is a reddish color, let's go with a darker brown at the top of this roof. A brown with a little bit of the Payne's Gray in it, too, so it shows up as a darker value. And then we'll pull that out a bit. And again, this roof, of course, is going to be a lighter blue-gray down here. But I'm, I'm going to get some sienna in it, maybe a little bit of red, because it still is going to have rust in it. We just needed it a little bit darker at the back so it'll pull it away from that red wall. And then down here where it's going to be against the rest of your building, that's where it's going to go to the blue-grays. So I'm going to clean the brush. Once you get the rusts and the darks in there, clean your brush and pick up your blue or paint and or Payne's Gray. Into thrown blue or Payne's Gray, a little of both is good. And add some white. So you get that blue look. Test your color and see if it looks blue or if it's still white or if it's too blue. Got a mid-tone value of blue in there, blue-gray. And then we'll finish off the roof. bottom of this roof needs to have a little ragged look too so once you get your colors kind of swept in there be sure you've got some little tears and so forth in this roof sure you've got those little streaky strokes in your tin because it makes it look more like it's tin to have those little lines in there and kind of little streaky strokes. just a little bit more rust color with the reds and or burnt sienna. As we finish up, I just now noticed I don't have a very good line right up here. If I had it, I lost it. So this is just a little bit of blue-white or dirty white on my brush to make the outside line of this roof edge where it sticks out beyond the wall and it's dark underneath. You want just a little light edge coming right down that top of the overhang. So that should fix that. And I might add just a little bit of something lighter on this lower corner right in through here. I, I already put a little bit there but I might put just a little bit of orangey white. Maybe the sun's hitting it right down there. Maybe as the light comes this way it might hit a little bit and that edge kind of drops over like it's kind of crooked anyway from being there for too many years. See, I could even curve it right here and make it kind of look like it rolls over just a little bit. Okay, let's come in with a small background brush and we're going to base coat this little bush down here. I'm picking up Payne's Gray and a little touch of the uh, green, permanent green light and tap in the dark bush. Just 
tap it in, especially over to the left side, which is darker. Might leave just a little bit unpainted on the light side. I'm going to bring it down just a little bit below the building, so it looks like it's truly in front of the building. And then just pick up some permanent green light with a little bit of your yellow and white. So you've got a light value green. Might be just a little too light there. And I'm going to tap it in on the light side and then bring it on over into the dark and work a little dark back into the light and some light into the dark so that you've got a little variation of color. Pick up just a little bit more dark here in my brush, not to lose it. And just kind of keep tapping here where the light and dark come together until it sets it together. Be sure if, you're, if your uh, bush is out just a little further from the house like this, you can probably let it catch, you know, quite a bit of sunlight. But keep the dark side darker. Okay, after we've got the bush laid in, let's go ahead and sweep our little path in. Now these strokes are going to go back and forth. Don't, don't go sideways or something, some crazy way because your path won't lay down. you got to make it go back and forth to lay it down. And this is going to be orange and white with a little bit of your uh, burnt sienna. Or, and or some Venetian red, but it's it's pretty light. I've got some quite a bit of them that is orange in there with those colors and a little bit of white. So just test your color back here. It can be fairly bright because we'll be toning it down. That might be just a little bit too pink. This is a little burnt sienna. I'm just kind of scrubbing in there. I'm going to add, once I get these colors in, then I'm going to come back with some raw umber and that will tone it down. Still a little bit orangey. Picking up some raw sienna and I'm going to add now just a little touch of raw umber. So I've got it a little darker at the edges. There's a better color. We're not going to be worried about the edges of the path right now. After we get the green grass in, we're even going to pull a little bit of green out into the path. So this is just getting a placement line of where it is and some basic color in there. And as you come forward, I'm going to pick up a lot more of the raw umber. Because I want it to be a little darker in the foreground. And we'll scrub, it, scrub into the orangey burnt sienna mixture. Raw umber, raw umber, even with just a little touch of blue in it would be okay. The raw umber is what's going to tone it down. violet in the path. That's always pretty. It gives you a little cool color like some kind of reflections. You can mix a violet with ultramarine blue or indigo blue is what we've got today with a touch of alizarin crimson and white. That makes it pretty lavender. I like some of that. Looks like shadows in the path. Little violet shadows. Lots more raw umber in the foreground. Running through these colors kind of quickly, but I'll come back and talk about them one more time here. I'll 
got this brown, the brown tones in the brush, I'm just going to go ahead and make this darker at the bottom. We'll wind up darker in the foreground, lighter back toward the building. That's kind of what we're planning on here. Just an old dirt pass, so we're, we're not trying to make it look smooth. You can leave some little, very loosely painted streaks of color down in here. Okay, again, this color up here to the front or to the building is a little brighter and lighter. It's got burnt sienna. Touches of orange, a little bit of white. I get that light in there. And as I come down, I picked up raw umber with those burnt sienna and, and those color tones that looks rusty. And we'll work some raw umber in through here, kind of chunky and choppy. The purple was a mix of your uh, alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue, and white. You get a little bit of that lavender in there. It's just pretty in there for little bits of shadow and color. Then when we do the grass, some green green will be pulled into the path also. So that'll tone it down more. Okay, we're about ready for our grass. And I do the, fan, the grass with the fan brush. And you're going to use short patting down strokes. Don't, don't flip up. We're going to go down. We're going to get more texture with the downward strokes. Colors are going to vary on the grass. As you can tell, we're going to have some darker values and some lighter values, so a grass will have some texture to it. But I'm going to start up here. It's a little bit darker right in through here and down kind of on this little slope. Little building's kind of sitting on a hill here, so we're going to angle that that direction. I'm going to pick up Payne's Gray with a little bit of the permanent green light, maybe just a tiny bit of yellow, and also some medium. You're going to use quite a bit of medium with your grass. I, I would like to work my grass a little bit wet. So where you want your grass darker, you'll pick up more of the Payne's Gray which I do want it a little darker up here, but I still want it to have a little bit of a green look, so that means some permanent green light's going to go in with it too. Now this is kind of a base. We can come back and put more highlights on it. I use about half of the fan brush. Most fan brushes, if you paint right in the middle, you, you'll get an arch shape that, you, that doesn't look good. So I use about half of the brush. You can use either side, but if you use about half the bristles and stay away from the middle of the brush, you don't get that arch that you have to try to work out. And these are, these are very soft um, strokes. I mean, they're not, I'm not pushing hard. It's, it's a light, lighter touch with enough paint on the brush that you can move it along. Finding the color that you're looking for is sometimes a little different for, difficult for people. But we're just working with the paints gray. You know that's dark and your, your uh, permanent green light is mid-tone and if you add that with some yellow and white in your brush you're going to get a light. So you can get very light, you can get way down to a dark with those mixes. It just depends on how you mix it. You can even add a little bit of the enthroned blue into your greens once in a while. That's, that's fine as well. But with this kind of semi-dark color here, kind of a mid-tone, paints gray, permanent green light, maybe pick up a little enthroned blue, add a little bit of yellow, and, and I've got this kind of a color. 
And so I'm just doing my little short padding down strokes, kind of work up to that little bush, and then on the other side of the bush, it's probably more shaded, so it's darker. You have to stop and think where your lights and darks would probably hit. Padding strokes. But this could be more like a, bu a brush um, a base coat, because we'll be coming in with highlights on top of it. Down along the edge of the road, I'm going to have it fairly dark. We do have highlights that's coming in on top of it, as I've said. Picking up a little bit of medium, so your paint has some moisture in it. And I'm just coming on along the edge of the road with a fairly dark value here. This is, again, paint's gray, little touch of green. And you can come out into the road a little bit too. I'm not trying to stop exactly at the road. I don't, you know, your grass can overlap into the road some. We need to make the path a little smaller here and there anyway. And then when I want it lighter, I just use the same brush. I reach down and I pick up some yellow and, and a little green and see then you can work some lighter colors in. You can kind of do that as you go, or you can give the whole thing a base coat that's fairly dark and then come back with your highlights. Either way works. I, I do it both ways. I tend to kind of change colors as I go along, though, because it, I kind of know where I'm going with the colors. But when you're not sure, just give it a dark base coat, and then we'll come back with our highlights. gray, blue, permanent green light. It gives you a pretty much of a, a mid-tone mid color. And some more paints gray. Marking it up. I kind of go up and down and back and forth and move it around so you're not going in a row. You don't want to row it. I'll pick up some light and kind of work in over the dark just so I've got some contrast as I go. Anything you get in is good. We can build on top of it. I don't want to see a sharp edge to the path at all so that anything that is along the edge of the path. You can just kind of sweep it out into the path and soften it down. Okay, so I'm continuing on back in here up against the building. It's a little bit darker, more shaded, a little bit more of your paint's gray. Work in with the dark. up here and pull this dark value down that I left under those trees. I wanted my my building to kind of be sitting on a little bit of a hill here and so rather than making this go straight out from the from the end of the building I'm going to give it a little light bit of grass back there on a slope. So I'm coming in with my light greens, yellow you know, greens putting the light in there and then coming down at an angle. So it just gives it a little more interesting angle than just flat and coming back there straight. It's look like you're looking up a little bit at the building. gray and maybe just a touch of blue. You can throw the blue, paints gray, a little bit of the green. That's your dark. And then to keep up the idea of this being a slope of ground here, if I work my 
brush kind of with, with the slope too, rather than straight back and forth across. Gives it more of a feeling of a hill. Anything that comes down next to the edge of the road, just pull it into the road so you get that softened edge. And then before I finish out with little flowers and maybe some more texture on the grass or whatever, I'm going to move over here to the other side of the, of the road and do the same idea way back here it's going to be more in the sunlight right here against the building where it's real light so you want a real light yellow green back there more white a little bit of yellow with your green that's in your brush Streak of bright sunlight kind of coming from here, then pick it up down here at the bottom of the building again. Makes a nice little bright trail that your eye can follow behind the building. And this grass can be a little lighter right there, but then as it starts to come down, it's going to get a little darker on the edge of the road, especially. You're going to come out into the road a bit with the grass so it narrows your road down just a bit. Just basically a base coat. I'm not trying to put a lot of highlights or anything on it right now. We'll come back to those. I can still have a little variation in color. When you come down into this foreground, see you're looking over the grass to the road. So we'll stand these little textures up so it looks like they're taller here, little flowers and all the little detail. So you're looking over it to the road. This side you're looking over the grass, the other side you're looking into the edge of the road in the grass. So it's a little different from side to side. And then down into this foreground, I'm going to try to get darker, a lot more paints gray, maybe some of your in blue quite dark down in the corner. Maybe a medium in there so it's not hard to get the paint to come off the brush. Darker in the foreground, lighter back in here, pulls your eye back to the center of interest, as it should.
Not the paint gray down here in the foreground. I'm going to move over here with a little more paint gray down toward the edge of the road on this other side too. A little darker there. Okay, we're going to add some little flowers to our grass now. I've got some texture in there, probably about enough. And um, I'm going to use the corner of my fan brush and watch me load it now because I'm going to pick up some white. See, I'm pushing away from me. Pick up white in the corner of the brush, I mean blue in the corner of the brush. And then we'll go over here and do the same with some white. I'll grab some white. So everything goes on one side of the brush. When you turn the brush over, the paint will be on the top right corner. If you're left-handed, I think it'll be just the opposite, but you know, you left-handed people know how to do that. But I'm pushing away, flipping it over. When I load it, I'll load it like that every time. And then I come in just touching the corner of the brush, bend, bend the bristles over just a little bit, and then give it a downward flick and it throws these little flowers off. A little bit of flowers, kind of whitish blue. If you want some of them bluer, pick up more blue. Like some of them a little lighter and some bluer, so I have a little variation of color. And these especially look nice where you've got a very dark base coat. Little areas where there's a lot of dark, that's where they look good. And these are just like little wildflowers. You can scatter them around in your yard. You don't want to just overdo on them, but get enough to look pretty. Give it some interest in the foreground. And it's just those few hairs of the brush. If you put any way back here, they would be a smaller. The ones closer to you are going to be a little larger because they're closer to you. few more down here in this corner and then we'll move some to the other side. Keep your brush on an angle. You're just bending it over just a little bit for the paint to stick and then flipping it back. I've got a little spot here that looks too light. I'm going to put some green in that and just kind of get rid of it. Put some green on the other corner of the brush. That looks better. Okay, I'm going to move to the other side. I'm picking up again the blue and the white, pushing away from me. Now on this side, we're looking over the road. So we can start actually up here in the road and come down into the grass with some of our flowers. The grass texture or whatever we want to do that's standing up past the road little bits of white. And I still am just using that one corner of the brush. You can put out as many flowers you want. I'm probably about to get enough here more down in this low part where it'll show up. I might clean the brush out and get just a little bit of yellow white. I might put a few little yellow white flowers in just to be something a little different. Kind of intermingle them with the blues. put in any you don't like, all you have to do is just wipe them out and you can just change them back to grass again very quickly. All you have to do is paint grass over. I'm going to come back with just a little bit more texture on my grass right up in here. There's a little flat spot that I never quite finished up, so I'll get a little bit more light grass in that little area. I 
has here, but see, once you've got a dark base coat on there, you can put in flowers, you can add more highlights to your grass, you can do whatever you want to do to it just on top of that base coat. At some point in time, you have to decide you're going to quit. <laughs> that's the hard part. That, that's the hard part. <laughs> when do we stop? You do just a little, you're, you're, you think, oh, if I do just a little bit more, it'll look better. Sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes you should have already quit. I think I've got enough. That, that, like I, I always tell the students, get back and look at it from about six to eight feet away, because that's where people normally view your painting. You hang it up on your wall in your living room. Of course, people that are interested in art, they'll go up and put their nose right on it to see what you did. But other people just look at it from a distance and they'll go, yeah, that's a pretty painting, or they'll think, well, she should have maybe taken macrame classes or something. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. But that's where you want it to look good, is from a little bit of a distance away. Because then you're, if your colors carry across the room, they read well across the room, then you've got something that is working. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed painting this painting with me. We've had a good time today. I've had a good time, and I hope you have too. So we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.